So uh, here we are uh, with Red Track Tours and uh, we're at Lena Aurora Range on a beautiful day here in May and uh, everybody's having a great time. We've been up the range and we're taking this opportunity to uh, meet Peter who's got his Mitsubishi Pajero here and he spent a fair bit of time kitting it out, doing all the work himself. So um, let's uh, introduce you to uh, Peter. We come around to his car here. Hi, Peter. G'day, Dave. How yeah. You doing? Yeah. So, Peter, thanks for giving us some time, mate. This is uh, exciting. Um, I've never seen so much work go on the back of a car, and Peter's just going to um, explain it. So, uh, Peter, um, yeah, tell us what was the most important thing you did to your car to start with. So, the most important thing for me um, has always been when going camping or even just general use of the vehicle around town is to have a bit of water on board because water is useful for so many things. It's washing your hands after you refuel, um, having a drink or when you go camping, of course, uh, for your primary water supply. So what I thought I'll do, I'll take advantage of the Pajero has got a large uh, underfloor well that the passenger seat normally sits in. So I've removed those uh, extra passenger seats, the seven seaters, and fitted this water tank in its place. So the water tank is 45 litre capacity. It's made by a company called Abba Tanks in Queensland. Fantastic people to deal with. Made it precisely to my dimensions, exactly what I wanted. And there it is there, you can see it. I'll zoom in. You can zoom in, Dave. Yep. And yep. Uh, what we've got is a hatch in the top, so you yep. can undo the hatch and, yep. and see the inside of the tank, inspect it for cleanliness or yep. whatever. Yep. Um, if you zoom in there, Dave, I don't know if you can pick yep. up that best yep. water filter. Oh, there's the best yeah. filter. I can just see it in there. Yeah, yep. so that yep. stands for bacteria eliminating silver treatment. And every yep. bit of water that comes into this tank goes yep. through that filter. Right. So the inside of the tank stays nice and pristine and the water tastes beautiful. And it's coming out of this tap here. And it's coming out of this tap here. Yeah. Yep, there's an electric pump, so there's the switch. Okay, so we yep. go over here. The, yep. That's the switch. And you just, did this all yourself, Peter? Yeah, wired it all up and, and got it all working. Yeah. And uh, that's and the main switch for the pump. The pump sits in here as well next to the tank. Yep. And then when we flick the tap, you know, we get a nice water flow. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, another advantage of having a, a pump permanently uh, fixed into the system is that it can run a little spray hose. So we've also got this little hose here that comes out. So if you want to wash your hair... Uh, wash you haven't got much hair off. there, Pete. You know, I haven't got much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that hose is very handy. And uh, we've got a water level gauge here, which is a standard RV. You find yeah, that on many campers. Oh, yeah. yeah and uh, yeah. this gauge here is really good. It's a flow gauge. If yeah. I hit that tap, you put your camera down a bit yeah, lower, yeah, though. Yeah. You see, that tells me how many litres I've got left in the tank. Oh, wow. It's very important to know because wow. as you're using water all the time, you yeah. get into the habit of knowing exactly how much you got left, particularly yeah. when you're free camping like we are today with yeah. red track tours. Yeah. We need to know how much water we got and how many more days we're going to be here. Yeah. So that is a very valuable piece of equipment. Excellent. And uh, that's pretty much all we can say about the water system. All right, thanks, Peter. Okay, Peter, so what have we got here? So we just showed you the water tank, and the next most obvious question people ask is how do you fill it up? So we have a little uh, system here with some inlets. They, they have take standard hose fittings. These are the yep. same ones you can get at Bunnings. Yep brass hose fittings and you can see the uh the signs here so the top inlet uh is how you fill the tank all the time because that goes through the best water filter um, the center outlet can be set via some valves to pump water out and the bottom outlet can be set to suck in so if you have a bucket of water or if you buy 20 liters of uh, water from the iga yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're on a trip and you want yeah. to fill the tank and pump it through the bacteria eliminating filter this is how you do it so what you do is you pull out your fridge, tilt her up. Okay. So you can access the valves. Right. And uh, if you just go around I'll the go back around end behind there, so, Dave, gonna... and then... so you'll see the valves here. Yep. There's a I couple of little those. chrome valve yep. handles. So you just configure those valves yep. in accordance with the instructions inside that the lid of that box. Yeah. And then you can basically make the pump suck water out of a bucket and pump it into the fuel tank via the bacteria filter. Right. So right. that sort of keeps you the health standards of your, your water up and yeah. it also gives you a great option if you have another source of uh, potable water of pushing it into your water tank using your pump. Right. Which uh, you might gotcha. not have access to high pressure hose to, to yep. fill the tank. Yep. So that's the way you can you can do it. And that. you've got easy access because this fridge slide here tilts over. Yeah. That's brilliant. So you're going to push it back for us now, yep, Pete, so we can see how that works. Let's just make sure that cable behaves itself. So we tilt that up, slide her in. Right. And that lock, locks in like that. Excellent. And then uh, you, your little cover goes back on to close up your valves. Right. So there you go. Thanks. That's how you fill up the water tank. Thanks, Peter. 
So that's great, Peter. We've gone from the water system now, and now we're going over to another very important thing, and that is the power system, the 12-volt power system. So you can tell us a bit about that. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Okay, so one of the criteria that I uh, had for my build is that I didn't necessarily want to be always carrying around spare batteries and extra weight when I'm using the vehicle around town. So I wanted everything to be modular, including the battery. So I could have mounted it permanently somewhere, but it's, for me, it's easier to mount it this way. So this is a... Uh, called a Bain Tech power top yeah. battery. We'll come in and have a look at she, that. Yeah, yep. so she's fully yep. self contained. Yep. So you've got two angle outlets, two cigarette outlets, yep. uh, USBs, and on and off button. So yep. you'll turn it on and off. Yep. Our, that is a uh, portable unit and can be removed and operate independently. But it's also solidly mounted in this box here. And plugged in at the moment is the fridge on that left uh, socket. Plugged in there. at the moment is the fridge, and as you can see, because we've been running around today, she's still at 12.6 volts. Excellent. So one of the important things with having a spare battery on board is how do you keep it charged up? So what I've invested in is a little Red Arc DC right. DC. This, this is interesting. Battery charger. So here it is, right here. This is DC here. DC 1225. Yep. And that has uh, capacity for solar input as well as alternator or vehicle input. Yeah. And it's not, it's all tucked away nicely and, and your electrical work is very good there, Pete. You've, yeah, and yeah. I'm always big on safety with electrical yeah. work. You can see the two fuses there. Yeah. I've got some spare ones here. Luckily, yeah. nothing's ever blown yet. Yeah. Um, so the good thing about this unit is it runs on what they call green power priority. So if your solar panel is pushing out current, the BCDC will take that and use it to charge your battery and take the load off your vehicle alternator. Excellent. So uh, that's the thing. So that's where that lives, under that box. And uh, in here... Or out here, I should say. Here's the solar panel. Now, the solar panel is sitting under the roof rack, which uh, if you have your roof rack, if you have tents or swags or something up there, you're going to prevent the sun from reaching that uh, solar panel. So what you can do if you stop and pull over, have some lunch or whatever, if you're in the sun, just slide that panel out, and then you, the sun continues to hit the panel while you're stationary and keep your battery topped up. And we're using the space under the roof rack there. Space under the roof rack and... Uh, what, I've tried to make the best use of space. There's only 50 mil clearance between beneath the rack between that and the bars, but uh, that space was otherwise wasted and not used for anything. Yeah. So I thought you might as well right. panel down. And then when you're ready to move off, you just click it in. This is a very secure latching system, spring loaded, can't come out, and uh, your panel pretty rock solid, doesn't rattle much. And you made that all yourself, Peter? Yeah, I constructed this. Uh, I saw a design on the web from a company called Dun and Watson in Queensland. And I bought the sliders off them, very high quality. Uh, I highly recommend them. And if you want to make your own, or you can buy one of these uh, slightly lower wattage, 100 watts, you yeah. can buy the complete unit for $700, I think they sell. Right. Them, and fit it yourself. So, yeah, but I, but I made this one because my panel was a bit bigger than the one that they supplied. Yeah. So. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. So, and that's the, and that's the 12 volt system. That's the 12 volt system. The only other thing I could add to that is that um, basically here, this these. The switches here all operate off this battery so they're not draining right. your vehicle battery yeah. these work lights come on off the main vehicle battery as does there's an outlet in there the water pump runs off the main vehicle battery yeah that's yeah. it so peter's now going to talk about the modular draw system that he's put in the back of his car so um tell us a bit about it peter right so with uh camping of course and overlanding you need somewhere to store your gear and draw systems are very convenient uh quick and easy to do that uh, but what I find is that they're actually quite heavy, even the uh, off-the-shelf ones you get are heavy, heavily constructed. And you don't really want to be carting them around in your vehicle all the time. You want to be able to fit them in for a trip and then remove them easily. So what I've done is I've acquired these. These came from uh, BCF. They're an XTM brand. They're quite well made and uh, quite solidly constructed. They're modular and you can easily remove them. What I've done is I replaced the floor in my vehicle with a... 12 mil reinforced marine ply floor and that mm -hmm. has captive nuts and bolts built in and in there you can see yep. oh, how yeah. these bolts in yeah top hats what they yeah. call top hats top hats yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I can very quickly and easily slide this out and undo those bolts and remove the entire drawer system oh that's it takes excellent. me about an hour to yeah. take the battery out and both drawers and then I'm back to just a normal wagon yeah albeit still with a cargo barrier for safety excellent and one of the other uh, great things about this is that these wings here can stay in and all of the water pump and everything is unaffected. So that all just sits beneath the floor and you can use it continuously if you like. Excellent. There's a small table here, which is very handy. So you can drop that down. 
You can make yourself a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. You can use this cutting board here. Cut yourself a piece of cake or whatever. You can make a sandwich uh, while you're stopped on the side of the road. Very quick and convenient. All this stuff stays in the vehicle. So you don't always necessarily forget it when you go on a trip. And you've got your hand uh, detergent there. Got and the soap fire there, extinguisher. got the water to wash your hands. If there is a fire, heaven forbid, you've got one there. got yeah. a fire blanket up there as well. So, yeah, I'm pretty big on trying to keep things safe and, and do the things the right way. And then when you're finished, you can just quickly pop that up and lock it in. And it doesn't rattle. Of and I see you've got a couple of speakers there to set the uh, there's mood your, there. There's your thing. So when, you, when yeah. you're doing the Jamie Oliver thing, you know, you've got your apron on and yeah. your G-string. You're yeah. cutting up yeah. the sausages. And there you go. You've got the music pumping at the same time. You've, um, you've used um, all the space up very effectively here. Uh, Peter, haven't you? Yeah, I've certainly you know? tried to. And, and there uh, goes the drawer system going back yeah, in. That's very quick and easy to put in. Just line it up, give it a shove, and there it is. And the good thing about these, you can buy these. These are worth their weight in gold. It keeps all your bits and pieces together. Oh, when right, somebody thanks. wants it, you can oh, rip it out. So here you go. Oh, excellent. And, and you can categorise what you keep in them. And yeah. I highly recommend these. You can get them from all sorts of different places. Yeah. I got them from Go Camping in Balcatta. Right. And uh, made in Australia, top quality canvas. And they're so useful because everything stays together and you know where it is. So, yeah, it's in the right hand drawer. Yeah. So, one thing's for sure, Peter, you're well organised, aren't you? I like to be organised and I find any sort of camping or overlanding or any touring whatsoever is a lot more fun and enjoyable when you're organised. And you're planning to do a bit more camping and uh, etc. Definitely more with uh, Red Track Tours, and uh, we, we're very enthusiastic to do more of it, and that's why I've, I've built the vehicle this way. And uh, But it's also my daily driver, so it needs to be versatile enough to do how to do that. And we're all looking forward to going to Karajini National Park. Karajini, living yeah. the dream. Yeah, good on you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>